7.7 Exponential Growth and Decay. This lesson piggybacks off of the previous section, 7.6. We learned all about exponential functions. They are in the form y equals a times b to the x. Our objective is that we can model exponential growth and decay. Now, you have seen this before. In previous years, growth means that the numbers are getting bigger, and decay means the numbers that are getting smaller. So let's first talk about... Um, the blanks that are in the very beginning. An exponential function can model growth or decay of an initial amount. Growth, numbers getting bigger. Decay, numbers getting smaller. Let's first focus on exponential growth. It can be modeled by this formula, y equals a times b to the x, and you want to fill this in in your box in the key concept area on your notes. a is the initial amount when x equals 0, so whatever it starts with. And B is going to be the base. It's called the growth factor. And it must be greater than 1 in order for it to be growth. Lastly, the X is the exponent. The graph of an exponential growth function is going to look like this. As you can see, the numbers are exponentially getting bigger or growing. And the graph is going up. Let's look at our first example. Since 2005, the amount of money spent at restaurants in the United States has increased about 7% each year. In 2005, about $360 billion was spent at restaurants, which is quite an enormous amount. If this trend continues, about how much will be spent at restaurants in 2015? Ironically, the year that this video is being made. So, first of all, we know that it is growing because it says the word increase. That's important. Increased about 7% each year. So, first, let's write down a times b to the x. That is always the exponential function form. x is going to be the number of years since 2005. And y is going to be the amount, the annual amount spent at restaurants. We're going to go up in billions. So to make the equation smaller, we're going to say that the y is the annual amount of money in billions. So that means we don't have to write all those zeros. A is going to be the initial amount spent in billions. which is 360, and B is going to be the growth factor. And the way that you get the growth factor is you always take 1, the growth factor must be bigger than 1, as I mentioned, and you add 7% in decimal form. So remember, if you start at the 7%, you just move the decimal over twice, and you get 0 0.07. So when you add that together, you get 1.07. So now let's just plug all that stuff in. Y equals 360 times 1.07 to the x power. There is our exponential growth function. And now it's asking, if this trend continues, how much will be spent in restaurants in 2015? Well, in the year 2015, that is exactly 10 years after 2005. So that means our x value is going to be 10. And that's the number we are going to substitute in. When you plug this into your calculator, you get approximately 708. So that means about $708 billion will be spent at restaurants in the U.S. in 2015 if this trend continues. Compound interest. I know you have heard this before. When a bank, a bank pays interest on both the principal, which is the money invested, and the interest on an account has already earned. So compound just means it keeps building upon the previous amount. And this is an example of exponential growth. So, so this is exactly why we're talking about it right now. This is the formula for compound interest. So you want to write this formula in the box at the left. A equals P times the quantity 1 plus R over N to the NT power. 
A stands for the remaining balance. P stands for the initial amount, underline that part. That's really important because I know principal is kind of a weird word. Um, that means the amount that you deposited in the very beginning. R is the annual interest rate. It must be in decimal form, underline that as well. N is the number of times interest is compounded per year. So monthly would obviously be 12 times a year because there's 12 months in a year. Quarterly would be four times a year. And I think those are the basic two. And then obviously once a year would be one. Um, and then daily would be 365 basic you know, based on a regular day or a year. Um, and then lastly, T is the time in years. Now let's use this. Suppose that when your friend was born, your friend's parents deposited $2,000 in an account paying 4.5 interest compounded quarterly. What, what will the account balance be after 18 years? So that means how much will be in this account after your friend turns 18? Let's write down the givens. I know that word problems are, tend to be overwhelming, so let's just write down what we know. And we're going to use all of the variables that we just talked about in the previous slide. Okay, P is the principal or the initial amount. And it tells us right here that the initial amount was $2,000. So that's going to be our P value. R is the annual interest rate. Here's the annual interest rate, except it's not in decimal form, so we're going to have to, I'll do this on the side, 4.5, we're going to move the decimal over 2 to the left to make it in decimal form, so that will be 0 0.045. N is going to be the number of years, sorry, number of times the interest is compounded. Quarterly means four times a year, because there are four quarters in a year. Um, and lastly, T is going to be the time in years, and it told us that it's 18 years. And A, we do not know. That is the remaining balance, and that's exactly what we're figuring out. So let's rewrite the compound interest formula. And now let's simply plug these numbers in. 2001 plus 0 0.045 over 4 raised to the 4 times 18 power. I suggest when you do this in your calculator, don't all do it in one step, that there's more likely to be a mistake. Uh, do everything inside the parentheses first. So that means we get 1.01125 and 4 times 18 and the exponent is 72. And then it's easily plugged into your calculator, 2,000 times 1.01125 to the 72 power, that is equal to 4475.53. So that means the balance of this account is $4,475.53 after 18 years. So as you can see, it more than doubled by just sitting in the account, which is awesome. So let's write that conclusion sentence. So hopefully this shows you the usefulness of a bank account and hopefully also encourages you to save your money. Now let's take a look at what exponential decay means. We're going to use the same formula, a, uh, y equals a times b to the x, but this time the initial amount is going to be when the x value equals zero, but the difference is that the b is the decay factor. And that is going to be between 0 and 1. Remember, in growth, the B had to be bigger than 1, whereas in decay, the B must be between 0 and 1. So please write down the formula right here in this blank spot on your paper, and also label what the A, the B, and the X stand for. The B is the decay factor. So, like I said, the B must be between 0 and 1, so I recommend circling that as well. Now, on the right side of your note sheet next to this key concept box, I wrote exponential growth or decay. This is how you figure out if it's growth or decay. You look at the B value. So, I'm just kind of re repeating what I'm saying before, but if the B value is bigger than 1, then you know it's a growth factor, whereas if you know the decay is between 0 and 1, then you know it's a decay factor. 
So growth is going to get bigger and decay is going to get smaller. So that's the difference. I would recommend highlighting this area on your paper. Now we can see a real life application problem of exponential decay. The kilopascal is a unit of measurement for atmospheric pressure. The atmospheric pressure at sea level is about 101 kilopascals. For every 1,000 meter increase in altitude, the pressure decreases about 11.5%. What is the approximate pressure at an altitude of 3,000 meters? Like always, let's define our variables. So x is going to be the altitude in thousands of meters. Y is going to be the atmospheric pressure. And it's measured in kilopascals. The reason why the X and the Y are the way they are, remember the Y value always depends on the X, so the pressure depends on the altitude, so that's how you know which one's X and which one's Y. A is going to be the initial pressure in kilopascals, so we'll just abbreviate it KP for now. Um, and that is the number 101 they told us right here. And B is going to be the decay factor. We know that it's decay because it says the word decrease. And the way that you figure out what the decay factor is, you take the one and instead of adding the percent, you're going to subtract the percent. That is the difference between growth and decay. Now in order to figure out the decimal, you just move it over two to the left like normal. So that's going to be 0 0.115. And we're subtracting that equals 0 0.885, and obviously that number is between 0 and 1, so this is decay. Now we're ready to plug all this stuff in. Y equals A times B to the X. Y equals A is 101, and B is 0 0.885 to the X. That is our basic decay function. And now it says, what is the approximate pressure at an altitude of 300 meters? So we're going to take that three, sorry, 3,000, wow, 3,000 meters. So we're going to plug in 3,000 for the X. And actually, to make it easier for ourselves, we're going to make that be, let's see, X is thousands of meters. So we actually don't have to plug in 3,000, we just have to plug in three because the unit is in thousands. So I'll just write technically 3,000 meters. That'll make it much easier for the calculations. So now that 3 is going in for the x, and we're going to have y equals 101 times 0 0.885 to the third power. And that is approximately 70. So that means the pressure at an altitude of 3,000 meters is about 70 kilopascals. Obviously, that is smaller than the original 101. All right, awesome. We are at the end of this lesson. Thanks for sticking with me. Feel free to try the lesson check that goes with this. If it'll let me go on, you can do it. Here it is, growth and decay. If you do not feel comfortable with this right now, you can wait until we do prompts together during class and make sure you have completed the 7.6 lesson check. See you soon.